of two minute either pitches or just updates about your work or course questions, whatever it may be, it's two minutes for delegates who have been in this room and especially in Christian Day, so also with a good lab start to talk about some of their work, to just share it with the audience and see what conversation that sparks off. Um, we do this in some other events with the social entrepreneurs. What's really interesting is kind of diversity and also the, um, the challenge of just putting um, people in that space for two minutes um, is often doing that best than people. So we just have the people who are going to be part of that um, down the front because what we'll do is we'll do two minutes, I'll time it, and we'll have next person up. And it covers people down the front, so we've got Joe Constance, we have Tessa, we have Lorenz, we have Paul Spencer, Andrew Ray. And it's still a chance. Anyone else? Molly? Yeah. I'm really sorry, you played the road rather than you've done some Have you got space for one more? Yeah. Good. I'm making Is that you? Yeah. Right, Thanks. Thanks. You can do less than two minutes if you like. So, we're going to have both Paul and Andrew if you like, because then that will lead into a discussion around. Hey! Um, so we'll have Andrew and Paul last, because then they'll just lead into an informal discussion about partly some of the support which is available to resource and raise partnerships, uh, some of the work we've been taking value from our education students out, delivering impact, but also um, building on sort of that presentation and the presentation from what we've talked about projects this evening, but actually the nature of partnership and actually what it takes to make these things work. That's quite interrelated with some of the support which is available. Then a bit of closing comments from some of our colleagues at the Good Life staff and, and some ways that we can follow up with us if we want to take some of these enemies ideas forward and then we'll be off the drinks. So I'll make sure I just have my phone near me and who was that? Molly, since I've forgot you. Sorry. Really okay, so um, I'll tell you when to drop, so I'll just get my um, timer up. It won't be two minutes, should I just stop? Yeah, fine away. Yeah, yeah, fine away. Um, hi, my name's Molly. I'm the University of Bristol lead on the Good Lab project. Um, so I'm working really closely um, with the guys on that. And um, essentially, it's just trying to tell you a little bit more about what Good Lab is and how you get involved. We're trying to do one thing, which is grow an ecosystem of social innovation. Um, and as you can imagine, growing an ecosystem can involve a whole lot of different things and it's quite difficult. So a couple of the activities that we're um, building at the moment I want to tell you about and, and hopefully you can um, engage with them, find them useful and share them with your peers and partners. Um, so the first one is a directory. Um, there's a directory under the heading of Education Young People and also under the four other headings that we are focusing on through these event series. And under that lists uh, knowledge repositories, uh, so papers, um, policy listing, um, activities, centres for support, uh, funding opportunities, and anything else that you might need to know if you are um, in an HVI or a social entrepreneur looking to um, build a project around education young people. And the second one is a LinkedIn group called um, Good Lab Southwest Scale and Grow which is focusing around our social entrepreneurs that we're scaling up at the moment, um, but is open for all our partners, um, friends, and people that are interested and invested in social innovation to give their advice and to share their experiences as well. So hopefully um, either of those or both of those sound appealing um, and you will engage with them. Wonderful. One minute and 30. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I don't have to rush on to tell you when, or let me know when will happen. Okay. Far away. So uh, I set up a new social enterprise, I uh, set it up in November. It's, um, it's called Thinking Diversity CIC, and it will, somebody can wear another standing up here, um, it, it will work with um, the providers of goods and services um, to help them be inclusive for people who are non neurotypical. So that could be anyone, uh, for example, dyslexia, dyspraxia, asperger's, etc. It could be elderly people, it could be people from a different culture, it could be people with minor mental health issues. It's just people who aren't, aren't the norm that you're expected to be as customers and service users. So offering um, consultancy, training, um, and development of projects and services 
that will enable organisations to provide goods and services available from a council to a bank to a supermarket to an estate agent to an individual trainer to a university actually re-engineer what they do. So I'm, I'm not absolutely, I'm changing the system from offering support to people who actually find you difficult to use your service or buy your products to actually say, <coughs> not that support, not that support anymore, that's an old way. It's actually about doing things differently to remove barriers so that people don't need support and everyone could just use the service and be happy. Okay, so really looking for opportunities to partner, people who are interested in joint funding things, people who are interested in uh, taking part in pilots. Um, so this year I'm developing um, demonstrable examples um, which we can then grab and scale up. So that's what I'm looking for. Two minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there's one minute and thirty. You can it? carry on. You can <laughs> so, Just something really important that happened on Paul's phone. <laughs> So my background is, I, I, I began my career, my career in science, and in agricultural research, and then I went to work in broadcasting, and then I worked in project management in the public sector and the charity sector, and actually, so uh, communications, uh, targeting things to different audiences, and um, uh, you got change campaigns, and finally, I have dyslexia and dyspraxia myself, and I'm organised customer in London, and I'm part of a whole network of dyslexic people. Thank you. 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 Thank so, um, hey, my name is uh, Peter Anderson. I'm currently doing a PhD, starting out with an idea uh, and just encountering some of the issues that uh, all the four speakers kind of shared with us. And thank you very much. Was, I think um, you know really valuable to kind of get a sense of that. Um, I'm interested and feel passionately about kind of social care, looking at different ways of configuring and uh, facilitating services, and I'm looking to explore digital technologies potential within that space. Um, thinking about developing partnerships within this project, I found it quite difficult to think about how on earth do I get this off the ground. So I kind of decided a little bit randomly to sort of create myself as the partner in the sense of kind of I had bolted on a PhD onto the side of my, the project. So it has given me a kind of physical space uh, within which to kind of operate and tap into all the amazing resources that uh, are on offer within a university, but also to sit slightly outside of that and to kind of develop this idea in, in some other function. It's still early days. Um, I hope to come back maybe, I don't know, in the next series and be able to kind of say that this has progressed. But um, yeah, thank you again to all the speakers. And if uh, anyone has any other kind of interesting ideas, I'll be very happy to hear from you. 30 seconds to spare. Oh, thank you very much. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> and just as you, so as you scamp up to your seat, and then we have a spare time, is there anything that you want to ask of the audience? Is there anything you need at this stage? Um, ooh, need at this stage? I, I didn't bring an ask. Is that probably. No, no, it's okay. If you don't have an ask, it's a great position to be in. If you need nothing. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've got a couple of people's email addresses, and I'll be following up with like cups of tea. <laughs> Thank you. Joey, yeah. Whenever you want to give it on your mark. Give it an arm. Okay, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Constant. I'm the owner and founder of Kids Eye Enterprise. Uh, we're a bit of an anomaly because we've been in existence for over 10 years, and <coughs> the work that we do um, centers around the well being and developing resilience within our young people. We work both with primary schools, year five, year six, and we also work in secondary schools. With primary school children, they have a journal, and they work through, and they find out about themselves, they find out about the values, what they believe about themselves, and we do that because I personally believe that schools focus too much on the outcome, and a little on the actual development of the young person. So we try to rebalance that. And we try and get the young people to almost create an inventory of themselves. So at the end of the programme, which works for six weeks, 
they have a wall chart, they actually have a DVD, where they do a presentation of themselves about what they've learned about themselves. So they have that, they can take that home and share that with their family. We do a similar program with the older students, and the focus there is to get the young people to recognize themselves as a brand. We talk to young people about brands. Um, this actually idea originated from my daughter who did an advertising and marketing degree. And so we took the concepts of why do you buy a brand, why do you buy a particular product, and we said to the young person, well, if you were a brand, what would you be? What would you want people to think of you when you leave the room? Um, if there's one word that would say who you are, what that word would be, what would that look like? So that these young people now, when they go, hopefully when they go for an interview, they're not staring into space and suddenly say, tell me about yourself. Because it ends usually with a young person, well, I've got my five GCSEs, including maths and English. But um, and that's 30 seconds, okay, well, come in here again. Um, so we want the young people to recognize that they're more than just the sum of their GCSE. There is so much more to them. And we do a whole program again for six weeks. And they generally feel better about themselves because they recognize that they're not just simply the worth of these academic qualifications. No offense to the academic years, but I just want to be bad at that. That's okay. Thank you very much. Carl. Oh, don't do me. Really yeah, no, no, no. It's a bit scary. Okay, it's a great pleasure to let you get you out from behind the camera. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Kyle. I bootstrap a search enterprise called the Media Collective. Um, we help make the soundtrack of social change. Um, I am always happy to discover new members of a team I didn't know I had. Thank you, Tessa. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> and just to remind you how much talent there is in the room, everyone's got so many different stories. And one of the things I set them on my session enterprise up to do is to, to release those stories and stop them becoming invisible. Stop amazing things staying within a room and not getting out there. Because these days, if you're not on Facebook or on Twitter, if you're not out there, you may as well be nowhere. So what we have is a little group of people that come along. We make podcasts. We live stream events. We do audio video recordings, put it all together, so the stuff you do gets done and then people get to hear about it without you having to get in techie. Now, one of the reasons I'm here is because we've recently been approved as a, um, a content provider for a Google project, um, a Google Labs project, through an app that many people wouldn't have heard of called Field Trip. And what that does is it um, generates content uh, that pops up on your phone through the Google Now um, app that many of you might be aware of on the Android system. Um, and tells you you're walking past something of interest. So if anyone here is working with a project that is in a physical location that you'd like, not advertising, but a heritage location, or someone uh, in that location is, 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 um, that's got a story to share, um, possibly something to do with um, recipient capital or tourism, something like that, a bit of a story. Um, and you've got some funding to tell that story, but don't know how to get it done, and you'd like it to be on Google, um, we'd love to be able to help. So if you'd like to come and chat to us, uh, we're always walking around with ears open. Okay, and um, I think that's probably all I can say. Well, you have 20 seconds. Okay, <laughs> I, I, uh, I can't juggle, I can't tap dance. I, <laughs> I do give great hairstyle advice. <laughs> so I'm um, Kyle, the Community Collective. You will find my website at soundsharechange.com. Oh, you have to see. <coughs> I couldn't um, resist the opportunity to come and do out a pitch, really. Um, <laughs> my name is Carl Belazer, I'm the new uh, as, um, Assistant Director at Social Enterprise Works, which is one of the, uh, for those who aren't familiar, one of the lead partners of Good Lab Southwest. And so, curiously, show of hands of those who have never heard of Social Enterprise Works before. Interesting, so I'm preaching almost to the converted. Um, yes, so uh, Central Park Works has been around supporting uh, social community enterprises, started and thrived since 1993. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of highlight for those thinking about the space uh, for others working um, uh, um, within uh, and sharing sort of insights from today with others uh, that if you're looking for any training, advice, coaching, support throughout your journey from start to scale and beyond, uh, then Social Enterprise Works would be more than happy to hear from you before you work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, what are so in that sort Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll see you do it simultaneously. Let me know when you're in that. So I'm going to try and do two things. Uh, a, a bit about me, but also a bit about RBI, because that's been mentioned. Uh, so earlier on, my name is Paul Spencer, I work at UWE. I, uh, my job title is Research and Development Manager. I work in the department, um, so I explained earlier that uh, universities are huge places, you have groups of academics in units of faculties, departments and schools maybe, and then you have people who work alongside them in professional support services. Uh, at UWE, uh, uh, I work in a support service called Research, Business and Innovation. Uh, research, Enterprise and Development is the equivalent at the University of Bristol, and Andrew's going to talk about that in a minute. Effectively, what it does is it's kind of an interface in between what goes on in the university and the outside world. Um, academics, uh, as you've seen, are quite interested in their kind of academic research. Uh, that, that's kind of what drives them, that's what they want to do. And to get partners to do this, uh, there are people who offer money. So government organisations, uh, funding councils, uh, big businesses and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of an interface. How I'm here, um, I'm, I am a PhD, I did a PhD, then I, uh, I've been, for the last 12 years I've been training PhD students to be better at what they do. One of the things that uh, PhD students and researchers are told quite often is that they lack commercial awareness, they don't understand how business works. I don't think that's true. I think that's a bit kind of uh, stereotypical. I think they understand profit maximising businesses all too well, but they're just not inspired by it. I don't know any researchers who are in it for the fame and the money. Um, so I've been interested in social business as a vehicle to engage researchers for a long time in terms of getting them to understand that there is more than one way to achieve their kind of social aims. Because the reason that most researchers do what they do is because they are motivated by making some sort of difference. Uh, if you want the ultimate impact, then starting a social business and seeing it flourish is the ultimate uh, in impact, I think, in life. And that's it. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Andrew Ray. I work at the University of Bristol in Research and Enterprise Development, sort of equivalent unit to the one that Paul has just described. Um, we develop, um, in particular relevant uh, to this group, uh, collaborations. We help people handle intellectual property. We help sort out contracts. And we help finding funding for projects involving people at the university and very often people and organisations outside the university. So if you uh, work or study at the University of Bristol, what we can do for you is help you think through who you might work with outside the university to apply your research. And also, if you don't know who to work with or you need new partners, we can help you find those. If you work outside the university in somewhere else, then what we can do is to help you think through maybe can the university help you with a bit of research to support your business, can it provide some expertise that you think your organisation lacks? Can it connect you with other people? And also we can give the negative answer. If we don't have the expertise, but we know some other university that does, for example, University of West of England or University of Bath or wherever, then we can tell you those sorts of things as well. Um, for those of you who are internal, we also run enterprise competitions, which as well as catering for regular profit-making business ideas, will cater for social enterprise ideas too, um, and have a number of other support facilities other than mine around student enterprise and public engagement and working with policy makers. The other thing I wanted to say was, there's a few of these purple leaflets around, um, and these tell about the funding scheme, which is one of the things available, and uh, it was described in our first talk tonight, actually, that was the funding scheme used for that project. It typically, connects partners outside the university and business and charities with researchers, do a project together that's going to have some significant benefit <coughs> in the next few years. It offers of the order of a few thousand pounds, um, and it's money that we have here that we can apply for internally, though it is still competitive. A couple of other examples from the Graduate School of Education. Got about five seconds. <laughs> One example from the Graduate School of Education. <laughs> Um, uh, Helen Noller has done some work with an organisation in Bristol called Urban Pursuit who provide education for kids who are excluded from mainstream schools and then she's developing a new curriculum with them with the money. Thank Brilliant. You. Thank you. Thank you.
guys. Um, I think it's something we're having to wrap up a little bit earlier than we would have liked by um, the facility stuff, which is why maybe my eyebrows are working a little bit more past the presentation than before. But um, it's, it's just a good moment to see if we have any questions for any of the speakers or anyone who's talking more about what some of the universities offer or any closing comments from the speakers um, for the event. Katie. Yes, sorry. Um, Paul Gracious is one of our RBI programs. I just started at the University of West England yesterday. So, um, thank you, Paul. That was very nice. Um, but I just have to talk from the student enterprise perspective. So, oftentimes we have students that are looking for project based work, and it fits basic, um, you know, the startup social enterprise scene quite well oftentimes because, um, you know, you might have certain needs that need to get met, and they have to do project based on on met needs, so it works out quite well. Um, we also um, do a startup drinks, which is open to um, any sort of startup organization within Bristol and oftentimes as students as well. So it's a nice opportunity to engage with the university, but at quite a different level um, than just going in from, you know, big research bits or whatever. Um, and we're also oftentimes looking for mentors as well to help students um, develop their own business ideas and your experiences can help with those really, really well. Um, so if anyone's interested in getting in touch, we're just enterprise at uwe.ac.uk and you know, we'd be happy to um, even help you navigate through like how to, who to get in touch with that or the other, so you know, please get in touch. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, any other questions for any of the speakers who just tap us over the pictures or we'll have to do those and comments? Just a question about the um, directory. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that, like, how is that shared? Is that, like, all, is that particularly shared with universities, or how is it updated, or what's the purpose behind it? It's like, sponsored by Molly, right? Yeah, um, so don't worry, it's is open for anyone to access. Um, and to the um, It's focused around serving social entrepreneurs, so that they know um, how to access more than Finances um, in their specific area, but we hope that it's also useful for the other players within social innovation. So that's academics, um, other public sector organisations, civil organisations, private sector organisations. Um, and what we're hoping for is that that can be a repository for all of those stakeholders to input and to get out of the together. Yeah, it's it's all on the website um, at the moment. First directory we have is up, which is education and young people, um, and that's going to go broader into sustainability and um, creative industries and as time goes on. And it's worth noting that if you are already known to be good enough staff and doing something interesting, which I imagine most people would assume that applies to, you speak to either Rob there, the other thing, Kevin Chef, who are not very good, and Molly, who are part of that mapping process, because sometimes I've worked in certain areas. Hope, of course, is responsible for this piece of website as well as lots of the hard work as well. But um, there's been times I've worked in certain areas and I've just really wanted someone to do a thorough job of actually mapping who's doing what in those areas and actually and being able to sort of follow up with that. Not just the resources, not just some advice, but actually really get those links to actually who's already operating that space. And this is the resource in these thematic areas that we're going to have to build. So um, part of it is about being able to use the resources, part of it is actually about that two-way dialogue about uh, implementing what we are doing um, into this space so that others can benefit from it. But other um, links may come from that and potential partners or profile for your organisation. So um, I hope it's useful. Yeah. I just wanted to dovetail at the end, but I didn't get to say that I'd come up and say something really quickly. Mm. Um, but um, we're a social enterprise in Bristol and um, we work with um, pretty much 80% of mainstream um, especially schools in Bristol. Um, so this is particularly really interesting um, for us. Sorry, my name is Crystal from Unique Voice. Um, and our kind of forte is using creativity and drama to um, unearth young people's confidence and work with them on issues that might affect them during adolescence. Um, so we currently um, don't have really any kind of partners with um, academia or universities or anything like that very much work with local authorities around the data that we hold and the other people. So this is particularly interesting for me. I don't know how yet, but just if everyone's going, oh, do you? That would be amazing. So, um, that's very interesting. <laughs> that's all I was thinking. No, thank you. That's really useful. It's about sharing. And I'm really sorry. 
kind of got a room which isn't necessarily conducive to an open um, discussion. It seems everyone seems to be facing me, we really should be talking to each other. Um, uh, our, our next event will be in a different kind of facility, but this one seems to work quite well for it. Um, just quickly to round up with some follow ups, um, yeah, so you'll get an email within certainly next week. I don't want to over um, promise and under deliver on behalf of the Good Lab team um, who have brought some resources to share with you and some of the things that have been specifically mentioned today. We'll also share the delegate list, which won't be email addresses, but will be names and organisations. So if you need to follow up someone you haven't had a chance to catch up with details, um, you can do that. Um, and Jimmy, do you have anything to add as you do? Leaving so much of hard work and I might be talking about it. Oh, I just want to thank you all for being here. And um, I also want to say this is a hefty funded project, um, for those of you who didn't know, um, in, in collaboration with um, Unlimited, which is the Foundation for Social Entrepreneurs. This is an experimental, year-long project to see how we can grow the ecosystem of support and bring together collaboration and work together to, to make change and positive difference in our, our local communities. Um, we've got two more events coming up, as Daniel's already said so. Really hope to see you all again and uh, do connect through through the website. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you.